I'm David from Hailbytes. If you use AWS and need to collaborate on software development, video editing, or game development projects, you'll benefit from what I'm about to share. You can quickly provision your own Git-based source control in 26 regions around the globe with the low cost and reliability of Amazon Web Services. I'll show you how to do this on AWS over the next 10 minutes. By the end of this video, you'll know how to launch your own version control infrastructure, set up AWS networking, create your organization and your first repo, and make your first commit. Step one, navigate to the AWS Marketplace. Step two, search for the Hailbytes Git listing. Step three, select the Hailbytes Git option. Step four, select the Continue to Subscribe option. Step five, then we'll accept the terms and conditions. Step six, you'll need to wait until the subscription is available. This will probably take a few minutes. Once it's ready, go ahead and click Continue to Configuration. Step seven, go ahead and click Continue to Launch. It's important to take a moment and look at the usage instructions since these will be where you'll see the URL for accessing your container server. Once you're at the launch screen, You'll want to leave Choose Action as launch from website and likely change to a t2.medium. Then you'll want to make sure that you select the VPC uh, we set up in the earlier public networking video. Um, select your VPC with host names and IP assignment enabled. You can watch a quick tutorial in the description if you need help setting up public networking on AWS. So I'll just check real quick and see what our VPC ID is for our public and for our public somewhere. So it is VPC-07D for a public VPC. And then it is, if we go to subnets, it's subnet public, subnet-049. And then you want to go ahead and create a new security group based on seller settings. You can go ahead and name this. The lights get security group. And you can optionally restrict these ports, SSH for if you're SSHing into the server for administrative purposes, uh, HTTPS and HTTP for connecting to and pushing updates to the Git server, and then 3000 for accessing the Git server dashboard itself. So in this case, we'll just leave them open. And then your key pair, you'll want to make sure you have it set as a key pair that you have access to, and you can go ahead and launch the instance. Now, step 11, we'll want to navigate to the instance details directly or through the EC2 dashboard. So we can go ahead and click on EC2 console here. And then we're going to go ahead and wait until the health checks come back green for this instance. Uh, the instance is going to automatically configure Kataya. It will automatically generate the certificates for the domain that is provided. It will create DNS entries, and it will update the administrative account with the instance ID of the server as the password. Now, once the status checks have come back as green, probably after a few minutes, we're able to click on the Hailbytes Git demonstration server details and go ahead and copy the instance ID. Next, we're going to go ahead and access the Hailbytes Git dashboard. We'll do that by going and typing in the following URL, https colon forward slash forward slash, and then pasting in the instance ID, putting it period, and then typing your colon 3000 to connect to the proper port. And that will bring us to the main Gitea login screen. Step 14. Now we'll go ahead and we'll connect as the Git admin. You'll do this by going from the main dashboard, clicking sign in, and then putting in the username git-admin, 
and using the instance ID for our server. And then clicking sign in. And you can go ahead and save that password. You'll likely want to rotate this password out, but it's important to note that when you do major updates, it's going to go ahead and reset the administrative password as that instance ID. Step 15. Once you've successfully logged in, you can begin creating repositories and users and adding code for them to start using your Hail Bytes Git instance immediately. We'll go ahead and create a repository as an example. We don't have any templates defined yet. We'll use default labels. Um, this also is optional. We'll go ahead and set it as Python. We'll set our license file as MIT license. And then for trust models, the signatures for when you're actually making commits, we'll leave it um, by default where each person has their individual signature. And we'll create a repository. Step 17. Now we'll want to go ahead and clone the repository using git clone and the HTTPS URL for the repository. So we'll go ahead and we'll open up Mobax term. And we'll start a new terminal session. And we will do git clone. And then we'll go ahead and grab this URL and paste it in here. And we can see it's asking us for our username. So we'll put in git admin, and then we'll grab our instance ID here. And it's gone ahead and pulled down the repository. Now for step 18, we'll want to go ahead and add a simple hello world file to the repository. So we can see a license and a readme.md file in here. We're going to go ahead and use vim and add hello world.py. And then for Python, a uh, hello world file will just be print hello world. And we'll save. And then we'll go ahead and test that Python file quickly by writing Python hello world.py. And it goes ahead, it executes it, it runs the Python code. Next, we'll want to go ahead and do git status. So we can see that that hello world file uh, is untracked right now. We'll want to go ahead and add it git add hello world.py. And then we can see it's tracked. And we'll want to go ahead and push it up. So we can just do a git push. And then it's going to ask us again. So we'll put in git admin, a password. And we'll put in our instance ID as the password here. And then we can do git status and git push. We'll do git admin, pop in a password, we'll do git commit dash m, initial commit. And we can go ahead and do the config real quick so that we're able to do a commit. So we do git config, global user.name, git admin, git config, global user.email, david tailbytes. And then we can go ahead and push again. And then we'll do git push. We'll put in git admin. And we'll put in our instance ID. And it'll go ahead and push it up to that branch. So now we're done with our changes locally. We can even go ahead and delete this entire repository. And now you can see nothing locally. But if we go to our server, we can see that that new change has been added in 25 seconds ago. And go and see hello world here. And then of course we can go back and we can pull it back down. And you can also save these credentials so that you don't have to put this in each time um, or you can create a separate user and use either this HTTPS authentication, or you can use SSH authentication um, and use a certificate instead of putting in a password every time. And so we can see 
Blamo. We've got our file back, we've pulled back the contents of the repo, and if this server had been destroyed, this code would be saved. It also is very, very easy, um, if I've been pulling this down to another server, to pull that code down and begin to work on it. So step 19, you're done with configuration. We've gone through, we created repos, we pushed code to those repos, we pulled it back down, um, we use git commit, git clone, git add, git push, uh, and we're able to use all of those successfully with your custom Git server. So there's a lot beyond this that you're able to do. If you'd like to learn more, please leave a, a request down in the comments, and we're happy to record more documentation videos like this. So you're ready to use your version control dashboard now, set up additional repositories and onboard users for task assignments. So make sure to go ahead and go over to AWS Marketplace and start up your own Hailbytes Git server.